Okay, my name is Moritz Mora. We have a little typo of my name on the introduction slide, but I hope that's not an issue. Um, I my career essentially revolves around data, esports, uh, and and betting to the most part. And I'll share a bit of context so you get an idea from which uh, perspective uh, we I'm, I'm coming into the space um, and how my my track record really relates to to a lot of the um, trends that we see in the industry now. Um, I've uh, it's now eight years ago, roughly. I've created a company called GG Wins. Um, it obtained the first uh, UK gambling commission license for esports betting. Um, you can imagine at the time, pretty uh, tough process to get a license while esports was just really emerging in the Western Hemisphere, uh, educating a quite renowned governing body around what esports is and how to apply license codes and principles to uh, that new, um, rapidly growing space. Um, However, that's, that's exactly what, what we did and operated in a few regulated territories in, in Europe. Um, and especially in the light of the US market now facing regulations and looking at esports and trying to see where it fits, uh, the, the experience from the time uh, is, is now quite, quite relevant. Um, I realized ultimately while operating this company that my passion and interest is a lot more on the data side and not so much on the operating a bookmaker side, uh, pivoted to a B2B approach in um, working more on data sided capacities and uh, sold the company subsequently to Genius Sports, a massive uh, traditional sports data supplier. You might have heard of the work of a lot of uh, big sports bodies and help them um, to handle data related capacities. I've set up the esports practice. Um, we were the first to offer live betting to the regulated market and the massive uh, growth in wager volume that you've seen in esports over the last years. I will go a bit into numbers later. Um, we were really there when this all happened, uh, being the first, being pioneers in, in that new industry and seeing it grow. Uh, also, during that time, dealing with a lot of challenges that esports brought to the table that, that were specific to the space, for example, combating skin gambling um, and, and, and other threats uh, to its growth. And ultimately, at the end of 2017, I left the company to go back to my esports roots or passion. And uh, with Grid, the company I've, I've set up uh, alongside with a brilliant team, uh, is uh, dedicated to unlock the potential of data in esports across a wide array of things. Uh, as a company, we work with a predominant share uh, of esports tournament operators and game publishers. We help them to get hold of the data through our technology, enrich it on our platform by contextualizing it, applying predictive modeling. Ultimately, a lot of products you might see on the broadcasts and stream overlays or content for social media is produced by us. Um, we also turn data into a revenue channel. Ultimately, we use official data in the partnership settings that we have and develop it into an asset for the benefit of our partners. And um, we are very passionate about what we do. It's a quite unique uh, group um, be behind that company. We're 50 plus people now based in Berlin, Germany. Um, we have a few other offices across the world and cover pretty much all three big geographies. Um, and esports being a global phenomenon that is, that is kind of important. Um, we also supply a, a huge share of the regulated sports betting space with data solutions. Uh, that are necessary to really embrace esports, harness the digital nature of uh, the games, and offer quality product uh, to a demanding uh, but ever grown audience uh, that is recognized by many as being um, very relevant uh, for the future growth of, of the betting industry as a whole. Um, just recently, and this is very much relevant for what we speak about today, we worked with the governing body in New Jersey to bring the first uh, state legally sanctioned esports competition to the market and made an event by allied esports available to, to the betting industry by going through the licensing process. So again, also in, in the US, we are really at the forefront of trying to uh, educate stakeholders in the ecosystem and establish a standard here. And I'm happy uh, to be here today and I hope uh, I can share a few learnings and insights from this journey and uh, that, that uh, participants or the viewers can leave um, with uh, knowing a few more things about uh, the, the industry we operate in, 
the importance and relevance of betting and specific challenges uh, that we face along the way. Um, I'm, I hinted at the, the global footprint our company has. Uh, this is very much not only true for, for our staff, but also for the partners we operate with, uh, both in, in US and Asia, besides our, our core stronghold in Europe. Um, we work with competition partners and uh, we've, we, we were lucky to, to acquire a lot of talent across different capacities, also bring passion for esports uh, to the table. And uh, the vision of, of Grid is really to create a game agnostic framework that can serve any sport because people, there's a lot of esports hype. Uh, conferences like this didn't exist when I created my first company for sure, uh, but they do now. Um, but we really feel it's our mission to, to inform people who look into the space uh, about the makeup of the ecosystem. And it is very global. It's incredibly fragmented, not just across different game titles, but also vertically within game titles, we see a lot of fragmentation. And game titles have very um, vastly differentiating cultural and regional preferences underlying. And if you want to engage with esports successfully, it's important to be aware of these. Um, this is a reason why I want to highlight uh, the global footprint at this stage. Um, speaking about the US, um, we, we obviously come from a business that is established in territories that have betting legislations that nowadays also encompasses esports. Um, in the US, what we have seen in sport um, post passport repeal is that a uh, few states are leading in the, in the process and, uh, and are looking closer at esports and how to license this. On a state-by-state -state level, it means, again, uh, it's almost like if you look look to Europe, there's uh, almost a different case in many states. But luckily in the US, we see a few leaders emerging, for example, in New Jersey or Nevada on the uh, regulatory side, introducing a framework that is that is more scalable. In, in many states, esports to date um, is categorized uh, not as a sport, but in an event-based catting uh, event uh, betting category. So this, this is a similar category in which you would find the, the, the just the recent US election or the, the Eurovision Song Contest or things like this. So you have to get a license for every tournament that you offer. Uh, Esports has so many tournaments on an ongoing basis. Uh, very much, uh, very often they have they happen on a short uh, notice. So the nature of esports scheduling as it is to date is not really uh, ideally positioned for that type of licensing process. So this is why we really uh, think it's great that some states are, are exploring already an esports wide bill that would more turn it into into a sporting category, alongside the uh, administrative hassle that you have um, with esports in that regard. There's also restrictions on the amount of wagers that can be placed. Uh, for example, low limits um, and only certain betting markets to be allowed. Um, Ultimately, we anticipate that uh, from a product perspective, the offering in the US will mirror what is already possible in Europe. And there are many front runners there, brands like Pinnacle, Betway, Free, Bet365, who understand uh, the digital nature of esports and leverage it to have a truly more automated offering than they have in any of their traditional sports of a vast amount of markets and uh, have a really compelling offering that is very engaging. And ultimately, this is where we see betting. It's a brilliant engagement driver for fans in esports. Um, yeah, so looking at the at this market, um, there's a tremendous number of, of bettors, uh, gamblers in the US already. And the esports audience in the US is also incredibly well represented. We've also identified a big overlap and uh, looking at the demographics that you have behind esports, uh, as an audience, they're incredibly relevant to, to bookmakers. And um, the wager volume in esports, which I'll tap onto in a second, is also quite overwhelming already relative to the size of the industry as a whole. Um, while on the revenue per fan side, and, and many companies here also attending this event can probably attest to that, uh, esports is is a bit behind sport as a consumer spending channel. Esports betting is already quite um, developed. Um, looking at the at the makeup of of esports, um, the the numbers thrown uh, thrown around uh, approximately between 1.2 1.5 billion for the size of the industry, depending on which source you look at. The wager volume uh, that we saw uh, this year was uh, 13 billion already. So. Then also taking into consideration that most of the money spent in esports that is 
making up the, the figure presented by market research uh, institutes such as Newsu is predominantly made up by B2B spending. Sponsorships, broadcast licenses are leading the race here. So on the consumer spending side, esports betting is the most viable channel that exists at the moment. Most of the consumer spending in esports, very different than from sports, is happening within the game. Uh, predominantly, uh, people purchasing cosmetic items or also referred to as skins. And um, this is a revenue stream you can't really attribute with exceptions where there are revenue sharing um, uh, structures set up between the game and the esports segment. Uh, but you can't really attribute them to, to the esports growth as a whole. So on the sponsorship side, betting also has been quite a uh, predominant factor in, in really infusing uh, the industry with capital. And in, in many games, we, we, we can almost say that uh, betting is a, is a big driver for competitions to happen. Um, all in all, this is, this is great. And if, if we see this trend continue in the right way, we think it has a predominantly positive experience to the space as a whole. And I'll, I'll tackle some of the uh, concerns that can come with uh, the growth driven by betting too in a, in a later part. Uh, but for now, what we can surely agree on is betting is a part of esports already is happening and grid as a company we are all about aligning incentives we want to ensure that it is introduced in the right way that the structures are right that the stakeholders are incentivized properly and also the, the goals are aligned uh, between the different entities um, that are relevant in this value chain um, for that purpose i want to drive a bit into dive a bit into the the data angle on this. This is clearly close to my heart. This is also what our company is mainly about. Um, we can distinguish between unofficial data and official data in sports too. In sports, even the official data to date is, is gathered manually for the most part. The, the difference you have between the data extraction mechanism by uh, a company working on behalf of a rights holder and someone disseminating an unofficial feed from a stadium, for example, is that one of the persons is sitting in a warm press cabin, but ultimately they are keying in data manually and or using other technologies to, to capture data from a sporting event. Esports being at the end of the day somewhere made out of ones and zeros has is entirely digital, is in a way the dream starting point from a data perspective, a level that sports may be through even more technological advances reach in some time, but definitely not to date. And what this also results in, in a, is in a vast, uh, the differ difference between the quality and um, the value of official and unofficial data. Uh, unofficial data is gathered through screen capture software, optical character recognition or computer vision applied to a public broadcast that is delayed by many minutes and is very unexclusive in that regards to the source. Uh, this uh, replays being on display impact the data points is generally quite inaccurate. Uh, massively delayed and also not quite granular, not really embracing the opportunity that is there in esports. If you, on the other hand, look at server sided extraction. So, Grid's business model, we, we deal with exclusive and official data only in our partnership. And we believe it's the right thing to do. Ultimately, our business model is aligning incentives between commercial stakeholders in the industry and the rights holders. And we, as a platform, function as a conduit in between the two. We share revenues for everything we do with the data, but at the same time, because we work in that fashion, we have access to perfect, hyper granular, 100% accurate, real time data. So also we generate the biggest um, value for the customers of our data. And um, in esports, the difference is, is amazing. The data scientists working at a company uh, from a big data perspective, esports is super exciting. and. Uh, this is really the direction we have taken and uh, part of the recipe of the success for our company, for sure. And um, why I think this is so important, uh, the approach and embracing official data is because it aligns the incentives. And especially looking at the US, the PASPA repeal discussion was driven by the big five, predominantly the NBA. The discussion mainly for, for other concerns with, with the PASPA law uh, was originated from the fact that there was no commercial consideration for the rights holder um, when there was a billion dollar industry um, um, monetizing their IP. And this is not the best way to, to set up things. I think it's important in a supply chain like that, that every 
uh, stakeholder is in incentivized and rewarded. And uh, in the, this has now surfaced in the form of integrity fees or, or other mechanisms on a, on a state level to ultimately support the sport. Um, the model that GRID is bringing to the table from day one and is establishing in eSports as a status quo, as a standard for the handling of data assets is emulating that approach. Uh, I also personally am a big skin in the game believer. Uh, I think it's brilliant to align incentives properly. Um, and you can also see from the numbers here on the slide, eSports also in traditional sports is a very significant share of, of the revenue channels uh, uh, or the revenue makeup of the rights holders. And uh, like at the comments I made before, uh, the proportion is, is really uh, even even bigger uh, relative to the total revenue in esports than it is in traditional sports. We think about um, empowering holders and turning data into an asset for them. Ultimately, a scalable revenue channel is the mission of GRID. The KPI that I use to describe the success of a company is the revenue we generate for our partners. Um, besides the, the revenue considerations, uh, I'd like to speak a bit about the engagement opportunity. Uh, the growth in esports we see, and very much the agenda of, of game publishers especially, is to drive um, the engagement of their game titles to a broader audience, not just active gamers. On the viewership side, we see already that around 40% of viewers are not playing actively in brackets anymore. Yeah, uh, There's certainly some level of affinity uh, with, with the game or the topic uh, underlying. Um, but ultimately turning esports from just a, a, an activity, a sporting activity to engage in as a participant to also a spectator sport and something you can engage with as a fan is important. And data and statistics are the core to this mission. Uh, it makes the game more accessible. It drives engagement with your most loyal and most informed fans. Uh, we use all the data we generate to give value back to, to the rights holders across areas like broadcast innovation, fan engagement, creating uh, content from it, ultimately turning data into stories is very much the headline under which a big part of our company is operating uh, in conjunction with our partners. Also on the sponsorship side, using data and uh, introducing data into content pieces or into widgets uh, that can be introduced to the broadcast is a brilliant way to position brands and one that has been recognized as a very clean and appealing engagement angle for many brand partners across the network of our partner competitions. And lastly, uh, data is the key to, to also uh, govern esports from an integrity perspective. Without proper performance data and knowledge about uh, what is happening ideally in real time, um, combined with trends you can observe by, by sc scanning odds developments on the bookmaker side, you have a, a robust foundation for any uh, integrity threat related investigation. And this is a role that GRID holds with many of its partners already and is a core part of our proposition. And um, especially with Betting already being such a significant part of esports, we want to make sure it's done in the right way. Both the revenue opportunity and the engagement angle are at risk if the integrity is not accounted for for the sport. Um, again, leading back to, to the official aspect, um, in, in our model, contrary to, 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 to other data companies operating in that fashion, um, official data is the key. Uh, we think that the Big Five or, or the NBA has been driving this conversation around it. Um, we anticipate that as the US uh, is introducing more legislation around esports betting, uh, as a bookmaker, if I want to engage with this and I want to have a big offering and engage the esports audience, I will need to base everything I do on official data. And it's important. This is how I align incentives. This is how I can position myself as a brand in a credible way with competitions and teams who are then all through commercial mechanisms in, in GRID's model, for example, introduced uh, and incentivized. Um, ultimately, I spoke about a bit here the status quo from a legislation standpoint. 
and uh, the trends, uh, the uh, the potential that we foresee. I want to speak a bit about the trends that we we predict just looking at how esports has developed in Europe and how it's now become a very flourishing market uh, for for esports in in these regulated territories. Um, ultimately, we we can see that esports and the conversations that we have with regulators is is being uh, recognized in a quite mature way. The the, the, the state uh, legislators uh, they they really have an have an open mind here and. Um, there are some leading states uh, that I think have exactly the right uh, approach categorizing esports as a sport. When I ran my first business many years ago, this was a tougher discussion in many of the countries where we were looking at legislation. And it's great to see that the US uh, in, in, in many ways is employing uh, that, that stance. And we foresee that the regulation will move forward as, as the sports overarching regulation is moving ahead. Also, the immediate adoption. Uh, what was visible in the US uh, on the sports side, and it's also like like in the in the in Europe, you also had many uh, being the first to introduce proper regulatory frameworks. Is there will be an adoption by other states uh, to, towards leading examples? So all in all, uh, this fills us with confidence, and this, this this will be an ongoing process, and we're, we're quite engaged with this. And as we speak, we're introducing more partners. Uh, and there are tournaments uh, as sanctioned events in, in different states across the US. I spoke about official data already. Official data will be the key. The regulators respond to the model that is introduced in sport. The aligning of incentives with rights holders is at the core of that. Um, not only is this the right thing to do just uh, from a commercial framework uh, and also empowering the sport itself, it also results ultimately in the best product being available and the best mechanism that can that can be introduced from an integrity standpoint. And then, lastly, on the trend, uh, I was in Vegas uh, at the Rainbow Six uh, U.S. National Final event uh, about a year ago, and uh, I remember seeing it was Caesar's Casino seeing an ad for live betting coming soon. So live betting being new here feels a bit funny if you're from a core stronghold uh, betting market in play is uh, in play slash live betting is where the action is in sports you see a predominant share of wages being placed during the game it is more exciting you have that instant gratification element any 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 kpi that you can use to measure the quality of a, of a bookmaker's offering to uh, the betters is is hinging on data uh, the amount of lines bets you can offer the market uptime um, the resulting speed, the accuracy of the odds. Uh, in esports being so digital, any prop bet, any wild uh, betting proposition you can think of is doable. Um, we see in play with like 80% or higher being the core driver for liquidity for our customers. You need proper real time data um, that is only available through official partnerships to power the type of product that will resonate well. And that is speaking about an esports audience, an audience that. Uh, I don't know, through TikTok and Instagram stories has a naturally shortened attention span already and is just demanding when it comes to the type of experience they see. They will not place a bet and wait 90 minutes for an outcome. Uh, In-game is really where you can capture the engagement of this demographic. And lastly, I want to speak a bit about a role in the ecosystem and, uh, and a few partnerships that are in place. Um, we have aligned ourselves with Gameco, a brilliant partner. Uh, incredibly resourceful, established in the US as license holder in over 30 states already with their core business at the forefront of the conversations that are happening around regulation in the US. Um, we're very happy about the partnership and together we're tackling a lot of challenges and have a big educational agenda going on uh, where we're trying to introduce the potential of esports to more partners. US bookmaking is one of the first adapters of the joint solution that we distribute and um, uh, we, we think that there will be many more. So ultimately, from a product and licensing standpoint, if you get everything right and your book that wants to capture the attention in the US market, eSports is a brilliant way in. And it's an, in a way, it's a white space. Uh, in, in Europe, we had some clear winners emerging who properly invested into building a brand and into offering a proper product based on proper data. In the US, these 
and this this battle is uh, is not fought yet and there's a lot of incumbents basically being the esports specific books um but uh there's a there's a wide range of opportunities still open and um, we want to position ourselves as a platform that can facilitate this and equip a company with a competitive edge in this race yes and then lastly on the integrity side this has been something a cornerstone of my career really but also in our company previously a more democratized um, uh, expertise uh, which we now formally uh, launch under our grid lock pun intended integrity brand and uh, we will align ourselves with ESIC and other integrity bodies in the space because integrity is a topic that doesn't make sense to compete on it. This is an interest of everybody in the esports and in the betting industry, one uh, that is that we really care about and it is very important to our partners. And uh, I want to use this venue here to announce the launch of this integrity brand and you will, you will hear more about it soon. So with, with that being said, uh, I think I have two minutes left. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, would uh, I'm happy to answer any questions through the app if I can make this work on my mobile. Um, yeah, or for or the moderator, there's a, this is now, now questions and then we're closing in three minutes, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, um, the uh, one question I saw here, uh, what, what other revenue slash data streams are you looking to target in the future outside of those mentions? So that's a very good question. So we, we do target a lot of revenue streams already. Betting, given my career path, was one that we understood very well and that is very relevant to the ecosystem. So it's one that we wanted to get right first. Um, I generally feel um, turning data into stories and embracing data as an engagement tool uh, is, has not really reached uh, a, its maturation with many esports stakeholders. Grid is developing stream overlays, watch pages. We do a lot on behalf of our partners to help them to position themselves, offer a unique viewing experience, and also have brand activations that can revolve around data. We are quite active in this area, and we will do a lot more uh, on that side going forward. We also do this in partnerships with many teams. You might have recently seen an announcement by um, BetSafe sponsoring Godsend, they're one of our partners. And also here for the sponsor, it was very important uh, to have that engagement angle driven by data. And uh, on this front, uh, I think there's a lot more you can do with statistics uh, to, to drive the engagement. Uh, I've seen another question coming in. What's the breakdown per region of the 13 billion breakdown today? So the 13 billion, I think, is alluding to the wager volume we saw for this year. Uh, the regional breakdown, I mean, uh, look, with, with the US, not, uh, the US numbers are, are not a massive contributor here. Uh, this is mainly established market regulated territories. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a fair amount uh, from, from Asia for sure, uh, where esports uh, really kicked off a bit earlier than in the Western Hemisphere. Um, yeah, I, uh, I feel free to get in touch, uh, but uh, I think I would. Uh, it would go a bit overboard here if I, if I dive deeper into the question because there's quite a lot to unpack. Good. Um, so with that, seeing nothing else coming in, thanks again, ESI, for the brilliant opportunity. And everybody have a great time. And uh, thank you for your attention. Um, goodbye.